Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website is eight self-improvement lessons <clears throat> based on what I've learned in 31 years as a professional therapist and 73 years on the planet. Eight lessons designed to help you live more effective, satisfying life. life. <clears throat> Lesson two of the eight is about how to improve the effectiveness of your thinking and your communication. <clears throat> my observation over many years is that the people I've worked with, my students, my friends, my family members, don't know how to communicate effectively. So this lesson is an attempt to show you some things that you may not have been taught to help you communicate more effectively with the people that are most important to you. Part of lesson two is a series of seven skills that you can learn. I suspect you can't name them right now. I've asked the question of hundreds of people in my life, students, clients, friends. No one could name these skills. You probably know them, but you don't know you know them. The purpose of this video is to give a brief summary of what are these seven specific skills that you can learn starting today, all of which will help you get your needs met more often in a way that pleases you. Let me start by saying communication occurs anytime the existence of or behavior of person A affects person B, spiritually, physically, psychologically, communication is far more than just talking and listening. The reason we all communicate is to fill two to five, two, between two and five needs. A need is a discomfort. So we try and reduce our discomforts real time, all the time, day after day, throughout our lives. Most people cannot name the five reasons they communicate. Can you? I couldn't when I began this work. You can find out what the needs are in another video. But let me just pique your curiosity right now by saying you seek to fill two to five needs with the young people, the teens, and the adults in your life at home, at work, in the grocery store, wherever. As you do this, there are seven specific skills you can learn to help you be more effective. The first of seven skills is one that you may not think you can cultivate, but you can. The first skill is awareness. And you might say, well, I'm aware. I challenge you and say, you're not as aware as you think you are. For instance, there are four zones that people can be aware of when they're communicating. Uh, zone one is, what's going on in me? Zone two is, what's going on in you? Zone three is, what's going on between us? And zone four is, what's happening around us? Are you aware of those things often in important communication? There are many, many other things to be aware of in the process of communication. Professional communicators, and I am one, can name almost 30 specific variables that you can pay attention to in important communication. Examples like facial expression, uh, eye contact, voice tone, voice cadence, pronoun clarity, communication sequences, communication um, patterns. There's all kinds of things to be aware of. That's the first skill. Um, the second skill, once again, you may think you know it. I suspect you don't know what you don't know. The second skill is clear thinking. Well, what is that? 
In my observation as a professional therapist working with many couples, parents, kids, families, I observe a common habit of people who are not aware is to use fuzzy pronouns which come from fuzzy thinking. People often use, as you may, in trying to communicate, they say, we've got to fix this problem, or that's a big issue, or get over it. Often in important communication, it's helpful if you specify what is, quote, this issue. You may know what it is, but your listener may not or may misunderstand. So the skill of clear thinking is really a way of looking at how you form the words in your head and the words that come out of your mouth. The objective is to become clear and specific when you need to. When you're saying, please pass the salt, you don't have to worry about this. When you're saying, do you think we should declare bankruptcy? You should worry about clear thinking. So awareness and clear thinking. The next skill is one you probably are unaware of. It will seem alien to you until you try it out. What I've observed over 40 years is that when people focus on problems, which are unmet needs, discomforts, they often focus on surface issues. A skill you can develop is recognizing when are you looking at a surface issue and how can you, quote, dig down to the real issue underneath this. For example, if you and I have one car and we both say, well, I need the car, and the other person says, so do I. If I use the skill of digging down, I say, well, what do you need the car for? And you say, well, I have an errand to run. And I say, what errand? I need to go to the dentist office. Uh, and why do you need the car to do that? Well, I need to be on time. What is that? 3.30. I see. And then do you need the car for something else? Well, yeah, I need to get it, uh, need the car to get home on time to make dinner. So I say, oh, you don't need the car, surface issue. You need transportation to get to the dental office on time and then get back home again on time. Is that right? And the other person says, well, yeah, that's the real need. You just dug down to find the real need. Then you can open up and do problem solving and say, oh, well, there are other ways of getting to the dental office. You might take a taxi. Uh, well, yeah. You could take a bus. You could get uh, Uncle George to drive you. Uh, yeah. It open, if you dig down, you often discover there are other solutions to problems rather than just black-white solutions. I need the car. Well, I need the car. So digging down is a discrete, developable skill. It's very powerful. <clears throat> the next skill is, is an old one. Many people have uh, taught about it, described it. Um, it's called mirroring by some people. It's called active listening by other people. Stephen Covey calls it empathic listening, which I appreciate. I like that title because it says, as he says, you listen to the other person with your heart. The theme of empathic listening is look at the other person, listen to their words, listen to their voice tone, and say back periodically what you think they mean, briefly in your own words. It does not mean you agree. It means you're trying to understand respectfully what are you trying to convey to me. You do that with empathy, listening with your heart. That is a powerful skill. Many people know about it and don't use it. Do you use it? Are you a good listener, quote unquote? The next skill is an odd one from most people's perspective. It's called meta talk, M-E-T-A talk. Meta dancing is dancing about dancing. Meta writing is writing about writing. Here's how to write a short story. Meta talk is talking with another person about how you are talking. 
For example, I might look at you and say, uh, you know, something I noticed is when we start to talk about money, you break eye contact and you won't look at me. That's meta talk. It's talking about the process that's going on between you. You need the skill of awareness in order to do this. Meta talk involves learning uh, somewhere between 20 and 30 specific terms that describe different aspects of how people communicate together. You don't have to learn all the terms, but seven or eight are very important. You can find out what they are in lesson two. MetaTalk is the way to identify communication problems. I notice that whenever I ask you, are you when you're coming home, you evade my answer. You don't give me a clear answer. That's a communication problem. So that's a very powerful one of these seven skills. The sixth of seven skills, you know the name of it, it's called assertion. The American Management Association has said assertion is the art of saying something in a way another person can hear or understand you. Assertion is the front end of problem solving. There are seven or eight steps to it. I bet you can't name them. I hope you'll study lesson two to find out what they are. Lesson two shows you how to identify the needs that you have, the reasons you're communicating, how to state them, and most importantly, what to do when the other person resists you, which they often will. So that's the sixth skill. The seventh skill is problem solving. It uses all six prior skills to find an acceptable solution to the problem that exists for you or for you and a partner. There are seven or eight steps to it. Once again, I bet you can't name them. I bet you're not doing them. I've just summarized very quickly seven specific skills anybody can learn to use and practice in the important relationships and situations in their life. I hope you'll get curious about these skills. Learn about them at sfhelp.org, the Break the Cycle website. Compare them to how you're communicating now and experiment with them. I appreciate your attention here. If you want to learn more about Lesson 2, see the playlist uh, that gives you more videos in this uh, educational uh, lesson. Thanks.